us. Old friends uh, Dean Brody and Derek Rutan are with us, but uh, a young newcomer is with us as well. His name is Ryan Laird, and we chatted with him. Here's his story. Raised steroid-free, as far as we can tell, on a beef farm in Fergus, Ontario, Ryan Laird loved music from an early age. At five, Ryan's parents put him in piano lessons, and a few years later, he decided he wanted to rock so he got a guitar. At age 10, Ryan toured as a member of the Cambridge Kiwanis Boys Choir, something he did for three years. He also began to perform around his hometown, singing at karaoke contests, festivals, and fairs. And then the songwriting began. Throughout his early teens, Ryan and his two younger siblings would tour around Ontario as a family band. Then at 18, Ryan made his first trip to Nashville. Armed with over 200 songs, he eventually landed a publishing deal. In late 2008, Ryan gained some notice from media outlets like this one after spending a bundle on a billboard across from Taylor Swift's Nashville offices with his face on it, holding up a note that said, Hey Taylor, I love your music, will you produce my album? Taylor acknowledged Ryan's inventiveness and said that she had listened to and enjoyed his music. Promising. In March of 2011, Ryan released a music video for his single, I'm Your Man. The video made it to number 10 right here on the Chevrolet Top 20 and also was a top 10 hit on country radio. Ryan continues to put the finishing touches on his full-length debut album. So he hasn't worked with Taylor yet, but with some newly announced opening dates for Alan Jackson in 2012, he's just getting started. There you go, you've got his story, now here's the man himself. Ryan, um, uh, uh, you are a, first and foremost, a what? Singer-songwriter. Singer-songwriter, what, what part of that do you think is more important or do, does one not exist without the other? For me, they don't really exist without the other 95% yeah. of the time, unless I'm singing someone else's song, then I right. guess the songwriter part isn't, you know, really in. But uh, I do write most of my own stuff just because yeah. I, you know, every day-to-day -day life stuff that happens with me or my friends, that kind of stuff will usually inspire my songs. Anything off limits? Uh, so somebody has a, you know, a, really. a tragedy somewhere, uh, anything like, are, are there friends who've made it into songs of, of yours that are kind of like, hey man, come on, how about a heads up? <laughs> well, you know, I, you know what I would say, that has happened, I've yeah. had lots of friends and uh, even my brother was in one of my songs, as you know, but uh, I would say that last night, what we got into here in Jamaica is off limits. Is that we're, right? We're not going to write about that. So Jamaica's <laughs> taking Vegas' slogan, is that right? <laughs> it happens in Jamaica, there you go, all right, but, but um, you, you've written with some really great people. Yeah, I've been very fortunate that yeah. way. Uh, I started going to Nashville about seven years ago, packed up the 95 Civic, threw the guitar in the back of the car and headed south and uh, with a dream, you know? Yeah. And uh, I didn't know a lot of people down there, but Jason McCoy was one of the, the first guys I met and, and I got to write some songs with him and crash on his couch and that. And from that point on, it, I, I just started making regular trips back to, to do songwriting and uh, kept meeting more and more writers to work with. Who are some of the other guys that, uh, that stick out? Some names you can drop. Uh, well, Monty Powell probably would, you know, would be the first yeah. guy I'd think of. He, he's uh, most known for his his writing with Keith Urban. He, yeah. he does a lot of songwriting with Keith Urban, and uh, they've had many you know successes together. And yeah. uh, I, I got to meet him a few years ago, and we ended up doing some writing together. And it's it's been uh, it's a real fortunate thing for me to get to work with him. Nobody actually ever reveals the secrets of what goes down. It's like kind of like the the, the man behind the curtain thing in the Wizard of Oz. But how does is is it just one of those things where you have a nice conversation with somebody one day at a coffee shop in Nashville, you're like, hey, and this is my buddy, and you get a card and you, you follow up with a phone call, and he's yeah, a nice kid, I, I should introduce him to my friend, whoever, and that person ends up knowing a guy right. that writes for Keith Urban. Is that just how it happens? I, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. It, it happens different, different every time, honestly. There's not really one set of rules to songwriting. Right. It, it's right. like uh, the inspiration could just come. That kid's going places, I tell ya. She is going places. Ryan Laird, more with Ryan a little bit later on. Here's Ryan Laird. We gave him the countdown beatdown. It's time for the countdown beatdown. Ryan Laird styles. You ready, punk? I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> Last book you read? The Dictionary. I'm a songwriter. I work with words, you know? Gotta, That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I don't want to ruin the ending for you, but uh, what's your favorite movie? <laughs> uh, Gladiator. What's your favorite takeout? Mm, I don't want to say Mickey D's. Okay. What's your middle name? Laird. Oh, is it really? <laughs> That's Shh. funny. Who's the smartest person you know? Uh, you. Sorry about that. Any superstitions? Yeah. Um, I don't want to walk under that palm tree. Really? Yeah. You're making that up. It, it was a crazy story from last night. Never mind. What's your nickname? Uh, Lairdu. Favorite board game? Chess. Name a great Canadian. A great Canadian. Pierre Trudeau. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Trek. Ever broken a bone? Yep. Which one? Baby finger. What's your ring? How'd you break it? I punched my brother in the head, but we were just little kids. <laughs> What's your ringtone? Uh, uh, can men wear jewelry? 
Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, favorite sport to play? Basketball. Beatles or Stones? Beatles. Farthest you've been from home? Uh, here. Can you cook? Uh, sort of. What's your signature dish? Oh boy, uh, pierogies. That's pretty good. <laughs> the Polish in you. Um, what were you for Halloween the last time you dressed up? I was a vampire. What did you want to be when you grew up? A vampire. Ever shave your chest? Mm, no. Well, oh, that's it. First album you ever bought? <laughs> uh, ooh, first album ever was Brian Adams, Waking Up the Neighbors. Ryan Laird, that was the countdown beatdown. <laughs> Consider yourself beaten down. Are you getting, are you getting sick? You're probably not, I'm thinking you're getting seasick, but you're probably getting sick for different reasons. Ryan did pretty well, the countdown beat down there. More with Derek Dean and Ryan a little bit later on. You think you could have done what you've, or you could have accomplished what you've already accomplished if you just stayed at home, or did you need to go to Nashville to make that happen? I really feel like I needed to go to Nashville to develop myself as a songwriter and artist. It's kind of like been going to, to school for me. Right, okay. Uh, I, I was in, in music school in Toronto uh, for a couple of years right after high school, but I, uh, I ended up dropping out, and, and I, would, I would have to give the most credit to Nashville, the songwriting community, to, yeah. to you know, where I am right now in terms of my country music, you know, songwriting and, and craft. I think that uh, I've, I've learned a lot by being there, but certainly, I mean, at this point, I, I'm now, I've done a lot of writing there, so now I'm, I'm really having a good time being back home in Canada a lot, well, now that I get to be out on the road and perform and that kind of thing. The hometown is... is Fergus, Ontario. Fergus, Ontario. Yep. Uh, what's the population of Fergus, Ontario? Still growing. <laughs> right now. As it, well, maybe not. You're down in Nashville. Um, is there a bar that you can go back and play? Do you ever play a bar in Fergus? I, you know, I, you? I did. Oh, sure I yeah. will. I want to go back and play the Fergus Truck Show. Hey. Seriously, yeah? Is it a big event, the Fergus Truck Show? It's a yeah. pretty big event, yeah. yeah. I will come back at some point. You're meeting some of these guys down in Nashville, some of the guys who've had huge successes, yeah. written with Keith Urban. and uh, What kind of, other than just sitting there and, and list, like maybe checking out their chord progression or a yeah. little guitar trick that they've got or a vocal trick that they've got, um, what kind of advice can they give you? What can you take away from guys like that who are in it every day making nice money and getting songs sure. on the radio all the time across the States? Uh, what kind of advice have they imparted on you? I think just just getting to sit in the room with someone like Amani Powell or some of these other yeah. hit writers that I've had the opportunity to work with and, and you see how quick they can think of like brilliant ideas and stuff. It, it kind of blows my mind. I'm just like, wow, like that's why these guys are making the big bucks doing that. Yeah. They're that good. But so, I mean, I, I try and go in with a very humble attitude and, and I'll usually uh, let them bring more of the ideas to the table first and I'll listen to what they have to say and then, and then maybe share some of mine once we get comfortable with each other. That's but. smart, right? That's, that's, what, that's what I would do <laughs> with the, the Yahoo's I go on the road with. They all know what they're doing and I'm just, I'm kind of faking it, right? So right. you let the other people, I'm not suggesting that you're faking it, but I am. You let the, let the real smart guys in the room talk first. Oh, I fake it right? all the time. Oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, here's a guy who's carpe dieminging. Ryan Laird, tell me about what 2012 has in store for you. Uh, uh, yep. Albums, songs, songwriting, uh, any appearances. What's going on with you in, the, in 2012? All that stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm working on the full-length album right now. Right. Uh, we'll be putting a new single out after the new year. Now, see, that's interesting. Is anybody anybody try to talk to you, talk you out of doing a full-length album because the world is a different? It's a downloadable world, a single world. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, we've put we've done that. I mean, we put out a couple singles yep. this last year out to radio and, and on iTunes and all that kind of stuff. And so, I mean, we certainly have done that that kind of process, but. Uh, uh, after you do a few of them, I mean, at some point, I still believe that, you know, the fans and, and music listeners deserve a full-length album. I still like know? albums. Uh, I know. So people, do I. There's a, I like there, to have a CD big, in my hand. There's a know? big school of thought out there, and even if people don't buy them, what they do do is they buy them when they come to your gig. Totally. Right? No, that, uh, the live a shows. souvenir. Yeah. I've got some, uh, I'm really fortunate to have some opening dates for Alan Jackson in April across Ontario. Yeah. <laughs> so we're we're, we're going to be good. <laughs> I've heard of him. Yeah. No, I'm really excited about that. And so we're going to, uh, my goal is to have, you know, a full length album ready, a physical record in my hand that I can, can, you know, hand out to folks You're opening there. opening up for Alan Jackson. I know. It's crazy, right? You seem so cool. Why, why are you so cool and calm and collected about that? I need to give you one of those Joel Stewart, uh, Reactions. Oh, I don't think he even got that out of you. That's very good. But seriously, that's incredible. That's a that's I'm, a that's a huge. I'm really excited about yeah, it. Yeah, that's a kind of yeah. like a welcome to it kind of moment, right? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I mean, Who told it's, you it's that? Who called you and told you that you were opening for Alan Jackson? My manager called me and told me uh, a few months ago. It was supposed to be in November, but um, he had postponed the date. So now now they've uh, they're making me wait till April. But you I'm, know why? He's he's I'm excited. 
He's kind of old. He gets tired. He needs to take a break <laughs> every time to again. rest. Yeah. yeah, he's worried about young punks like you coming oh, up I and don't taking think so. that. <laughs> he's a legend. <laughs> but what did you do when the phone call came in and you said you're, you're opening up for Alan Jackson? Oh, I, mean, I was like after floored. you picked the I mean, phone up off the floor. It was yeah, exactly. After I fell over. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean it was just an amazing feeling, and uh, you know it's just it's 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 really cool to look back over all the years, and, and I can look at each year and see see the growth in my my music career.